guys, it's Ryan and Eric from Tower Reviews, and today we've got a full review for you of the iPad Mini right in front of you. We've got the white 32GB Wi-Fi model. So without further ado, let's get into it and express some of our opinions of, on this product after using it for a few days. So first we're going to be going over the hardware of the product. Um, inside it has the Apple A5 dual core processor seen also in the new 5th generation iPod Touch as well as the iPhone 4S. So it has 512 megabytes of RAM and it comes in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte configurations along with the black and also comes with the capability of 4G with a $130 premium uh, from each gigabyte model. As you probably already know that is pretty similar to iPad had two specs which came out a very long time ago so you might be thinking okay specs aren't as great as let's say the iPad 3 or 4 but once we start showing you the performance you'll see that it really isn't a big so deal. it comes in at a height of 7.87 inches tall has a width of 5.3 inches has a depth so a thickness of 0.28 inches and a weight of 0.68 pounds has a 7.9 inch diagonal IPS backlit display with 163 pixels per inch. Just to show you a quick comparison between sizes, uh, we're not going to go into our opinions or anything, but there's a Nexus 7 tablet. So, I mean, as you can see, it's a tad thinner, but uh, it's about the same height, and uh, it also is the iPad Mini is also considerably thinner, yeah, uh, which much. is which is pretty nice, um, and it's just it's lighter as well, I believe. So, it's just a, it feels really good in the hand. You get a considerably thinner device with the iPad Mini, um, and it just looks a little better, in my opinion, too, more refined. So, what this all comes together to give you is a device that's very easy to hold in one hand. You can see there, it just fits perfectly in one hand. It's palmable, uh, everything in that sense. It's uh, it's very uh, appealing for people who are more interested in bringing their iPad with them to new places because it's going to fit into a bag much easier. It's actually even pocketable. Honestly, the one factor that makes it more easy to use in everyday situations it's just the weight um, it doesn't feel awkward if you grab it in the very lower corner with your hand because it's just so light you can just pretty much grab it from anywhere and it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall over so that's a my opinion that's a huge factor in um, in its usability alright so let's just take a tour around the device we're gonna start out on the front we've got the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera which shoots 720p HD video for FaceTime and self-portraits and if you can you can probably just barely see to the left of that the ambient light sensor which somehow they made white which is uh, a new thing with the iPad mini if you ever see a white iPhone 5 or 4 which we have right here you can see that the proximity and ambient light sensor is black so it definitely looks considerably nicer with the white so we've got a bezel around which as you can see if you've ever seen a regular iPad the bezel on the side is just razor thin compared to the iPad, the regular iPad, which I personally like. Some might not like because it doesn't give you much to hold on to, but what Apple did to uh, sort of remedy this issue is allow multi-touch uh, while your thumb is still on. So you can use multi-touch pretty much anywhere in the operating system. As you can see, I'm holding down, but it still works. We have nothing. On the bottom, we have the newly added lightning and uh, stereo speaker grills. We've got Volume rockers there, which have nice tactile feedback, no problems there. And the rotation lock slash mute switch, depending on how you set it in the software. On the top, you have the power sleep-wake button. You have a microphone and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So on the back here, you have a aluminum back with a mirrored finish Apple and iPad logo and you have the 5 megapixel eyesight sensor that shoots 1080p video but what you will notice is that there is no LED flash accompanied with that sensor which for most situations isn't going to be a big deal but images can start to get a little bit grainy in low light conditions. At this point I'd like to take a side note and quickly talk about uh, something that I noticed when taking the iPad out of the box. It's kind of off topic but I just wanted to definitely make a make a note on it. Uh, there was some light scratching on the back of the device straight out of the box. People tend to expect perfection and that's what I expected so I was a little bit disappointed to see that scratch. It just overall looks fantastic especially the white one because there's like this there's this uh, silverish trim around, but it just looks so shiny. I don't know, it just looks really nice. Um, overall, it definitely feels high quality, and it's definitely reminiscent of the iPhone 5's build quality, which I have right here. 
meaning that if anyone has seen any drop tests with the iPhone 5, it has fared rather well, so I would expect the same with the iPad. And if we just look at the thickness comparison to the iPhone, um, you can see that it's considerably thinner. Now keep in mind when we run this test, uh, we do have the um, iPhone 4S and iPod Touch 5th generation A5 chip. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that it does come across like it's almost one clocked at 1 gigahertz. It says 998 megahertz, while the one in the iPhone 5 and the iPod Touch 5th generation is said to be clocked at 800 megahertz. So it is the same processor, but for some reason it shows up at a different clocking rate. So we've got a score of 740. That's pretty spot on with the uh, results we've gotten previously. We did a comparison to the Nexus 7, which scored about a 1300 or around double the iPad. When compared with the iPod Touch 5th generation, it gets about a score of 625. So the iPad performs a little bit better than it. 800 megahertz compared to the uh, iPad Mini's 999 megahertz, which is kind of weird. So if we just look around the device, we can see that the iPad is very reminiscent of the iPod Touch more than really any other Apple device at this time. So if we look at a thickness standpoint, they're almost exactly the same. Not really, though the iPad's significantly thicker. We talked about gaming a little bit, dead trigger. Obviously, this is going to be definitely marketed towards gaming as it's a it's a pretty portable size and it off it offers a large display for getting very immersed in the game, which this does very well at. So it quickly loads it up, very fast performance there. So we're in the world, and you can just see that it completely it's just edge to edge bezels just disappear, and you're in the game. And I really like that with with the display that it adds over the Nexus 7. It's not a true 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I have not found a game that runs poorly on it and this is just some of the games we ran. Um, Dead Trigger being one of the more resource drawing apps. We'll just show you a quick demo here. Look with at this water motion. It's just, it's really realistic and there's no lag from the beginning. Even the Tegra 3 and the Nexus 7. Uh, struggled just when it was loading up, then it ran pretty smoothly as well. We have very bad Wi-Fi in the building we're in right now, and almost no mobile device works very well. Somehow the iPad is able to stream an HD Netflix movie. I guess that's attributed to the uh, dual band Wi-Fi that it has in it. So we're going to try loading up a uh, little breaking band and see how it works on the new iPad mini. As you can see there, we got some breaking bad playing, and what do you see at the top and bottom? Black barring. Quality is very nice, even on the non-retin display from an arm's length. Quality is absolutely fantastic. You can double tap and make it full screen. And this brings us to audio quality. It's all the way up right now. And it's coming out of right down there. Which is definitely nicer than some tablets that put the speakers on the back, such as the Nexus 7. Uh, the audio is facing away from you, which isn't the nicest. Um, but here, it's very nice. Alright, so we're loading up the New York Times here. It's a relatively quick load. Um, and it's absolutely fluid. Um, it's not completely loaded yet, but once it is, <clears throat> never really drops a frame. It's always a nice, consistent frame rate of about 60 or so frames per second. It's just basically mobile Safari with all the same options. Uh, it's really not much different than any other iPad or iPhone's browser. It's a pretty nice size for typing like so, like a regular keyboard. Um, it's a little bit too small. Uh, you can type pretty fast on it. It's not obviously as big as the regular iPad, but where the keyboard really shines is in portrait where you can thumb type and and also reach just a all quick keys. A quick note on this is the uh, the reduced weight and the thinness of the device uh, makes it able to be held like that and not be awkward at all, considering that most of the weight is above your hands. And you also still have 
the ability to split the keyboard, which isn't necessary this way, but maybe this way it would be. Um, it's pretty much perfect. Is this more similar to a bigger version of the iPod Touch or a smaller version of the iPad? And absolutely no doubt, it's the smaller version of an iPad. It has all the same apps, it has the same keyboard. Everything about it just reminds me of an iPad, obviously, because it is an iPad. But I, I don't know why, but people have been saying it's a big iPod Touch. Even respected tech reviewers have, I've heard them say that. So I don't know why, but just something I wanted to mention. If you're looking to get an iPad, you're going to get an iPad with this. You're not going to get a big iPod Touch. You're going to get all the legacy apps that worked on the iPad 2, which is also apps that work on any large iPad. You know you're going to get an optimized app that is designed specifically to work with this screen size. So I want to talk a little bit about battery life. We've had this iPad since it came out on November 2nd, and we really haven't fully just let it charge overnight. We have put a little top off on it, and it's still at 41%. So battery life is very good. And charge times don't take that long, although the power brick that ships with the iPad mini is also the one that is used with the iPhone, and I believe it's a 5 watt. So that will take about seven or eight hours to fully charge it up. So for all those people out there who are wondering what the screen actually looks like and are worried that the retina display is going to be an issue. Honestly, when I saw it, I was a little bit disappointed with like small areas. Like if you look at the clock in the top, uh, on the top of the home page, it looks very pixely. Um, it's kind of disappointing there, but honestly, there's not a lot of things you have to view that are that small on the device, so it really doesn't make a difference. Also, I can't really speak that much from someone who's coming from like a normal phone or from no smartphone or tablet at all because I use on a regular basis the Nexus 7 and the iPhone 5 uh, which have very high res displays um, so obviously I'm a little bit uh, biased in that opinion but from the distance that you're usually holding the iPad yeah. which is pretty far away you're not gonna be holding the iPad right up to your face like from this distance behind the camera I cannot even distinguish the pixels it looks fantastic I couldn't even tell you if it was a retina display or not so you're going to be able to tell, that's but just a fact. Overall, I'm a little, it leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's not something that should prevent you from buying the product. So I've got one book on the Kindle app. So as you can see here, I have the text rather large, and it looks crisp. Reading has been pretty good. There will be a little bit of strain on your eyes, depending on what you put the brightness on. Right now, I have it on full brightness, so I look at it, and it, it does cause a little bit of strain, but really no big deal, and if I... If I fiddle around with some of the settings, such as the brightness and even the in-app options, such as, like, I have it on sepia right now. There's black, which some people might prefer, and then there's white. Overall, e-reading is a pretty positive experience, and much like you will find on any other IPS backlit display tablet. Another new feature added to the iPad mini that was not on the iPad 2, oddly enough, is Siri. Your favorite voice assistant. It's pretty much... The same as any other device. One complaint I had with it, which I'll show you right here, is that that is the maximum display like real estate it takes up, one? which is not very much for how big the display is. It's actually smaller than the iPhone takes up, and if you turn it that way, it gives you a little bit more maybe, I can't really tell, but still could take up a lot more and give you more real estate. So here's the question, should you buy the iPad mini? It starts at $329 for 16 gigabytes, compared with $199 for the 16 gigabyte Nexus 7. So there's the problem that a lot of people are probably running into when considering what 7 to 8 inch tablet to buy. Me personally, I think the $330 price point is a little bit too much, but still not insanely over the top because you're getting a much higher premium tablet for that cost than the Nexus 7. I know a lot of people don't want to believe that, but if you just look at the materials it's built out of, right there you can tell that it's a higher premium tablet. It's made out of aluminum instead of plastic. You also get the rear facing camera. Specs might not be as great, but you got iOS, which is just a much more efficient operating system, which runs smoothly in almost every case. I think if you don't have an iPad and you want a tablet, definitely get this tablet because it's great for productivity, it's great for gaming, it's great for anything you're gonna wanna do with it, especially if you have other Apple devices. iPad mini large success. Now I'm going to smash it on the ground.